Hello, everybody. Andy Jacob here with the dot-com magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series. I have a great show today. You know, we always look out for the leading entrepreneurs in their respective spaces, and we love the medical field. We love doctors at dot-com magazine. Everybody that watches the show, you know, we love doctors. We love nurses. We love what they do to keep us healthy. We love especially what they've done over the last couple of years through the pandemic, of course. And we reached out to a couple of great entrepreneurs, Dr. Rhett Thompson, who's the co-founder and content director of a company called Physio, and his brother, Mr. Zach Thompson, who's the co-founder and, of course, the CEO. What they're doing at Physio is remarkable. They're a video resource company. They're really for people that want to become doctors. I mean, they've got thousands of videos. They're a resource for people that want to learn what they need to learn to take the test and become an official physician in the United States. We're so excited to have them on the show. Zach, let me start with you. Welcome to the Dotcom Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series today. Thanks, Andy. It's great to be here. Zach, it's great to have you and Dr. Rhett Thompson. I'll just call you Rhett during the interview. Rhett, you're the co-founder and content director. We've had a chance to talk before the show. Welcome to the show, Rhett. Thank you. So happy to be here. All right, let's get going, Zach, because there's so much to unpack here. Let's pull the lens back to 30,000 feet, Zach, and tell us about what you're doing at Physio. So the the, the idea first came with uh, Rhett and Michael that were actually, they scored really high on the, the USMLE or the United States medical license exam. And they said, you know, we really wanted to provide a solution for, uh, for the physiology section of the, uh, of the tests. And there wasn't anybody in the space or in the field that was really providing that. Cause we live, I mean, this is the, I mean, what we're in 2022 already. I mean, this is, you know, everybody expects to be able to go online and actually be able to get information, a video of something that they're looking for. And so, We've, we've been providing that, obviously, for medical students, whether they're in class and, they do, and the teacher may not be able to have the time to, like, fully explain a concept, whatever it might be, they're able to, like, look at our videos and uh, help with their retention and comprehension of any particular field, any particular aspect of the medical field that they need to study. Yeah, it's so important. And you have students all over the world that come to physio and they take your classes, they take your videos. I mean, of course... Uh, you know, Dr. Thompson, Rhett, he does a great job, as well as your other associate that puts these videos together. And they're remarkable because people studying, sometimes they need to go to sort of a go-to video and everything's done on video now. That's the way people learn. And what you've done is you put together this great business because you solved a huge problem because these people going through medical school, they really need to get updated to get ready for that exam, Rhett. Isn't that the way sort of the process works? Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's, we go through the first two years of medical school really focused on basically class learning. You call it didactics. You just picture the students all just looking at a professor all day. And then at the end of those two years, you take the test. That's one of three, um, the first of three tests. And it's the United States Medical Licensing Exam. Or for DO students, it's the COMLEX. Very basically the same test. Um, so for those first two years, you're just studying that. And, and you can imagine that at the end of those two years, trying to remember what you learned at the beginning of those two years, it's like essentially two years prior, it's really hard. And, and what's, what we've really been able to provide is, is something that can help you refresh quickly and have all of the important information that you need moving forward for clinic and for your exam. And so that's kind of, that's, we pride ourselves in being able to have that information. Yeah, I love it. I learn from video so much better than any other way. I mean, when I want to refresh my memory or go back and learn something, I go to video and that's what you've done for all these people, you know, that need to refresh even a couple of years back. They can go to your platform, of course, at Physio, sign up and start watching these videos and they're very engaging. You're actually uh, Rhett, teaching the classes, you know, on a whiteboard. And it's just like they're getting a refresher course on what they need so they can pass that exam. Now, Zach, let me go back to you just for a minute, because the idea is so fantastic. You already have adoption. People are going to physio. What's the model look like? Do these um, 
future physicians? Do they join one time? Is it a monthly fee? Do they pay by the video? How does all that work? So um, because Rhett and Michael were actually, you know, again, students, while we came up with this whole concept and they came up with this, these great lectures, it was coming from a student's perspective on what a student wants, a medical student wants. They want to be able to not have to go through an hour long lecture to be able to understand a concept that they might be struggling with. And so the genius behind what Rhett and Michael actually, you know, proposed was, you know, like, like, look, we're medical students. That's when they first started this a couple of years ago. And so they're like, this is what we would want. So we're going to provide to these medical, other medical students around the world. So they, be, they can become the best doctors they can be. And so, um, each one of the lectures that they've developed out, they've done it in such a concise, uh, comprehensive, easy to digest way. And I think that's what sets us apart really from the rest of our competition is the fact that they're short, sweet, you know, um, each video really covers. Um, and in fact, nobody really covers all the stuff that we cover. But as far as like the subscription to answer your question, um, we've, we're trying to, because we're targeting medical students that are already spending a lot of money on on schooling, we wanted to make something super affordable that is that is going to be worth it to them. And so we allow them, you know, for example, some of them just want to take a couple months prior to their tests. And some of them, they, they want the companion for all three you know, years of medical school. And so we, we give them discounts, obviously, for, you know, if they buy for a year or buy for two years. But we also not just uh, provide step one, we also provide step two videos as well, which um, none of our competitors really have have even really touched this. And so that's actually why we're now at that place where we're really trying to get in the rest of all the schools that we've, we've been able to get all around via word of mouth because everybody's found out and said, this is this is so much better than the, all the competition. And so that's what makes us really proud. Yeah, I love it so much. And of course, I was speaking with Rep prior to the show and you've you have people on the platform all over the world from Egypt and from Europe and South America. So, Rhett, when we think about it, here you are, you're a medical student. You come up with this idea, you know, with Zach and, and perhaps Michael at the same time. And there you are giving these videos as well as going to medical schools. That's sort of the way that it worked. And tell us about that process, Rhett, because that sounds like you, you had your you had your plate filled up pretty big there. Yeah, good question. You know, for medical school, it's just full time. Like your time is not your own. You know, I barely see my family. And that's for those first two years, which are all class learning and the second two years, which is all in clinic or in hospital learning. And, and it really is out of the question to be able to do anything extracurricular, such as like starting a business. And so there was a period in time in which I was about to take my board exam. So this would have been after the first two years. And I realized, you know, I was studying with my classmate, Michael, and we realized that we wanted, it would be, we just thought it would be really cool if there was a company that would be able to teach physiology concepts really well. So that was just something in the back of our mind. Then fast forward a couple months later, we started our, um, we, we've taken our board exam and started our third year. And, and then I just happened to be having a conversation with uh, Zach. And I think we were at um, Texas Roadhouse, actually, some in Utah, and, and just, and I was just telling him about this idea, and and he thought it was really cool. And he says, and gave me a lot of encouragement, and said, like, with the potential that we could if we could just get this started. Um, and I had a very similar conversation with our fourth business partner um, named Steve. And the one big question was, how in the world will I do this in medical school? So. I talked to my administration and it blew my mind, but they were so thrilled with the idea and so encouraging that they actually said you could take some time off, like taking a year off and come back and pick up where you left off. And so that's essentially what we did. So um, did the first two years, then full-time effort into physio for a whole year, and then went back to school to do my third year. And then it was so well received and students really wanted us to finish all of step one, not just, not just cover physiology, but cover microbiology and immunology and um, pathology. And so what we ended up doing is taking another two years off between the third and fourth year. And then at that point we finished all of step one and got everything 
moving for step two. And now step two is almost all recorded and largely on the site right now. Um, oh, what a great entrepreneurial story for the entrepreneurs watching the show. I mean, rewind what Rhett just said. He was together with Zach. They were maybe having, you know, a meal and they came up with this idea and Zach gave the motivation. Rhett went to his medical school and they said, wow, this is a great idea. We're going to give you some time to do it. I mean, it never hurts unless you ask as an entrepreneur. It's a great story. Now, Zach, we have a lot of medical students outside of the United States, but they want to come back and they want to practice medicine in the United States. And I would imagine those people that are outside the country, they're just running to physio because they get updated on everything that they need to know to take that U.S. medical exam. Is that the way it works? Yes. In fact, we were actually quite shocked that the amount of uh, students, inter medical students internationally and through the Caribbean that were... Um, um, we were actually just surprised that they were so excited about uh, using our product. And, and of course, the obviously English speaking. And, and of course, we have um, closed captioning for all of our videos as well to really help, you know, move that along. We try to provide every little service to just facilitate because, again, one of our main objectives at Physio is to is to train the next generation of doctors. And we want them to really make sure that they know and comprehend and retain everything that they're studying so they can become the best physicians, you know, and continue to take care of, you know, the planet. Yeah, it's so awesome. And we want to have great physicians as well. All the people that use the physicians, all the people that aren't physicians like Rat, we want the physicians to be the best. And that's why a company like Physio is so important because they get to go back and relearn some things that they need to be brushed up on or, or learn something brand new so it comes into their brain so that then they can take the exam, pass it, and then use that information that they're learning on the physio platform to help their patients, which is amazing. Now, Rhett, when we think about it, you're a practicing physician right now. Uh, what would it have been like 20 years ago if physicians or people in medical school would have had physio 20 years ago, like they have now, would it have been easier for them 20 years ago? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's, it's one of the things that we joke about is that the, the textbook that everybody uses just gets bigger and bigger. And it, it's increased in the number of pages over the past 20 years. And, and the, number, the amount of material that you need to really comprehend and, and really understand is just astounding. It was still a lot back then. Um, and 20 years ago, wasn't that long ago, really, but this sort of thing would have been extremely helpful. And oh, what a cool thing that we could be at this day in this day and age and create something like this to make really to improve the accessibility of medical knowledge to everybody. I think, I think this, I think there's a new frontier that we're on to actually. Um, and I don't know what the, the face of medical school education or medical education in general will look like over the next 10, 20 years. But, but I imagine we'll see a transformation. And I, and I think the steps that we're taking here at Physio are going to really help see that transfer, transformation into a new era. Yeah, I love it, Red. I want to stay with you just for a minute. This, this, this library you have, it speaks volumes of what you've done. And it's, it's, it's a large library with you know so much information packed into these videos. If you can, I don't know if it's, you know, confidential or a secret right now, but how many videos do you have on the platform and what's the typical length of a video, um, a video instructional video that you have on there? Yeah, good question. So, so as we mentioned, we've got step one material and step two material referring to the two of the, the board exams that you have. And between those two, we have over a thousand videos. And each one of those, I would say, is between 15 and 30 minutes long. And so, you know, short is ideal. I think everybody kind of appreciates the idea that, you know, a short video is the best thing to do. If, if it's, it's more enjoyable to watch and it's, if you're able to get the material in a short amount of time, that's how you want it. Um, and I think that comes with everything except for maybe like a really good movie that you don't want to end really soon. You want it to keep going on. But as far as like learning things, you want it to be sh on the shorter end. So we've aimed to do that. The one caveat is that there are certain subjects that you really want to stay cohesive. 
instead of just splitting it up for the sake of being shorter. And so that's where we end up getting between like the 20 and 30 minute range, which really isn't that long. But, but when you compare it to like a 10 or 15 minute video, it is longer, but it's, but that's why we, we end up having some of that length, because if we're talking about nephron physiology and we want you to know how to apply that information, then it's best as like a single unit. And that way, as a viewer, you, you're able to watch that. And, and you also have the benefit of knowing that once you've completed it, there's not like a part two that's going to jump out at you and it makes you feel like you didn't accomplish anything because you're only like, you finished a 30 minute video and it's only says part one. You're like, ah, I still got more to learn about this subject and it's, and it's hard. So, so I'd say, yeah, 15 to 30 minutes. If it's longer, it's because we need to keep it together. And if it's short, it's because we were able to do it. I love it. Of course, I've interviewed so many leaders around the world, and I can tell you one thing for sure. The words nephron physiology has never appeared in any of my <laughs> video interviews uh, from entrepreneurs throughout the world. And you said it like it was just a no brainer and nothing. I love it so much. This is a great story. I mean, two brothers come together, each with a unique set of skills Zach and Rhett, they put their minds together. And of course, Michael as well is doing some of these videos. And uh, what a remarkable team you put together. Zach, let's bounce back to you just for a second, because one thing that is very clear with the success that Physio is, is having is you really care about these, these people in medical school. You really care about these students. You really have put them at the forefront of everything you do on the platform, Zachary, or Zach, pardon me. So Zach, Tell me, you know, where did that come from? Where did this idea come from that you wanted to put this thing together in a way that really resonated for your end user, which are the potential and future medical doctors that are going to be serving so many people throughout America? So that's a great question. It's interesting. It's so it comes from a couple of things. So Rhett is my youngest brother. There are four of us brothers. And uh, in fact, uh, our, my oldest brother, he's in the, he's also been in the film industry for quite some time, but my, our, my two younger brothers are both doctors. And in fact, Jordan, who's in between me and Rhett, um, he's also, a, he's a, a, an ophthalmologist in Las Vegas. And in fact, he's actually done some of the, le- uh, voiced some of the lectures as well. So it's, it's fun because we have this, you know, have half of our families, you know, uh, doctors. And so it's, it resonates obviously a lot, but it's, but it's also really, um, for me, um, I had actually helped in the past, um, helped other companies start up and actually go online and do training videos. And, and so that's kind of why Rhett and Michael first came to me. They're like, Hey, we know you've done this before. And I said, honestly, it's a lot easier than you think, um, to, to put all, you know, record all the videos, make the, make the content and put it online and then we, and we sell it. Um, but the genius behind the product is what Rhett and Michael actually came up with are these concise easy to digest videos without long drawn out like PowerPoints that take an hour and uh, uh, all this additional fluff, not physio. We take, we just cut out anything that's unnecessary and get straight to the good stuff. And when I, when Red first, Red Michael first came, I said, look, if you guys can create, you know, these, these lectures, then we're going to have a slam dunk. We're going to be able to do this. Like, no, it's a no brainer. And, and that's actually why I'm so, I've actually been so grateful to be, uh, have the team that we've had that we have here at Physio is because they're everybody's such self motivated hard workers, and I've just been super impressed, and it's been just an incredible blessing to be able to have people that I can trust to work with and that that deliver on their end, and they're actually incredibly intelligent. Like our whole team, I'm anyway, and and just even on on this show, I'd love to just say how much how impressed I am with with Rhett. You know, I'm just, you wouldn't believe, like if you were a doctor, if you're a medical student, you actually saw the videos, you'd realize the genius behind these videos. And, and I give that props to Rhett and Michael. They're just, they just created an incredible product. Yeah, it's a great team you put together. Of course, the, the success of Physio really sort of tells the complete story, what's going on. Now, Rhett, when you do the lectures and you, you're on the whiteboard, I bet you have pretty good writing. Most doctors don't have good handwriting. You're known for not having good handwriting, but when you do the whiteboard, you have to have pretty good writing. Do you sort of know in the back of your mind what the test questions are going to be so you can sort of coalesce your lecture toward the test questions? How does all that work? Good question. Yeah, I, I think it's, think of it as like a very holistic approach to, to making this, this, these lectures and 
and a lot of thought goes into it as you implied it's so if you think back to, to when I was taking all these practice exams, practice questions in preparation for my actual board exam, I was really familiar with the material and how one gets tested on it. And before each lecture, I need to be armed with that same information. I need to know more or less how that is tested. What is relevant? How can you take something like basic physiology in the heart and then turn it into a question that's not only like a good question that tests your understanding, but one that is actually um, similar to how one could be tested because because there's thousands of ways that you you could test, but but there's certain things that the actual board exams are looking for. And so I have to have that in the back of my mind at all times. So yes, I, I do think about the questions. Um, and as part of that, I we I create my own. Me and Michael both, we've actually got a big team as well that has have made several questions for us that we incorporate into the video because because that's one of the best ways to prepare somebody to do really well on the exam, which is questions, is by walking them through questions after we teach a concept. And so in, in a single video, um, if we talk about how like the lungs um, can experience different pathology, then, and we're focused on a specific type like COPD, then you know, you can imagine from beginning to end how we're going, we're going to cover all those concepts, but there's a lot of things to know in between. And very segmentally, we will have questions that build on the material that we just taught. So in a 15 minute video, it'll have three or four practice questions, very board style, board style questions that reinforce that information. And so by the end of the video, students are able to have gone through the material and they know how they're going to be tested they have some confidence because they know how to work through the question and then go on to do practice questions for themselves. Yeah. So well thought out the way you've put it together is really remarkable, Zach and Rhett. And of course, Michael is on the team as well, as well as your entire team is fantastic. Now, Rhett, I'm going to stay with you for a minute and then I'm going to bounce back to Zach because I have some questions about entrepreneurship. I want to ask Zach, but Rhett, think back when you were in medical school. Okay. Now you're, now you're an MD, now you're a practicing physician. When you, what's the thing that's surprising to you now that you're practicing and you're in the hospitals and you're helping people? What's the thing that is surprising you about being an actual practicing physician? It's a little bit of a cur curveball question that you couldn't have imagined back when you were in medical school. Is there anything that's surprising now that you're actually practicing uh, that you didn't really think about as you were going through school and taking the courses and of course, you know, of course doing the courses as well for physio. Yeah. Um, well, real quick, I want to mention that our, we have four partners uh, as Zach and I um, gone through this conversation, just failed to mention that Steve is one of our uh, great partners and, and he's one of he's excellent. He's there on in the trenches with students and, and working with them and making sure that he's got his finger on the pulse and on, what the students are experiencing and that greatly informs what we do. Um, but in answer to your question, we've got like when I was in med school compared to now, one thing that stood out to me recently, kind of having this uh, recency bias since it was something that just occurred to me, this is kind of what I'm going to share, but um, realizing that telling people that they're going to die was, is crazy. That is such a crazy experience. And, and, you know, there's a lot of like, they're very solemn, you know, and one I did not expect to have happen. And, and I, and this just happened like a week ago. And, and, and I was surprised that I had not had anything like this up to this point. But when I'm studying in the books, the beginning of med school and, even building physio, I'm not thinking to myself, oh, at some point I'm going to have to like be in this hard situation and be so close to, to life and death, which is ironic. You think you would be, but I wasn't ready for that. And, and that's been something that's shocking, you know, like, cause we, we think about all this stuff like conceptually, you know, particularly, you know, here at physio, you know, I'm, I'm obviously very, very aware of, you know, how the body works and, and how one communicates to others about how the body works, whether it be students or patients. 
and then when you hit some hit with something like that, you like have this really, I don't know how to put it other than it's, it's pretty shocking. And, 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 uh, I'm, I'm grateful to like, to be able to help people, but see the, I don't know, just like life and death, you know? It's, yeah. It's very fragile. And of course, you know, it's very intense and, you know, it is, it, it is a, a life and death situation. Um, Rhett, when, when someone is going through medical school right now, are there classes available or are mandatory classes for those, those students to learn how to handle these types of situations? Or do they, is it only the nuts and bolts and the anatomy and the physiology and the, you know, microbiology, or are there classes to teach the, the physicians about how to deal with people in communicating these tough things that ultimately do need to be communicated, you know, as you get out into the field? Um, yes, they do. It, you know, as I'm saying this, I'm, I'm thinking back that the, there was a great deal of information given to us and, and to really try to prepare us for it. But as I just basically proved, it just goes in one ear and out the other because it's, it doesn't really have a huge impact on what I'm doing at the time. You know, it's like this, this is information that's not going to help you on your test. This is, this is information that's not going to uh, have any impact on anything you're doing in class right now. This isn't going to be something you're going to see for years. And so with all that information, it's like, okay, well, I, I don't have that much time to focus on that. So I'm going to put it aside. And even if I was focused it, on it and really took it serious at the, at the time, which I'd like to think I did, it's still just, it, it's hard to apply at the time or take it seriously because I'm not in that situation. And so it becomes almost theoretical or hypothetical. And then I just hope that when the time comes, I'll be able to take advantage of that information. And, and so, yeah, I'd say that I was, I was taught, but nothing prepares you for it. Yeah, I could totally understand that. That's got, that has to be one of the toughest things in the world. And when we think about doctors and we think about all the great things that they're doing, and of course, the younger ones that are in medical school that now go to physio to get upgraded and updated on everything they need to learn to get that test when they get out in the field and they go through the residency and things like that, nothing possibly could compare you for that or, or prepare you for that life or death conversation or that life and death reality. So um, that's very, very fascinating. Now, Zach, let's, let's go back to entrepreneurship a little bit. Let's talk to the entrepreneurs watching the show. I mean, here you have physio. I mean, you know, you were with your brother, you came up with the idea at a steakhouse and you've got, of course, Michael and Steve that are doing such an amazing job. But we have younger entrepreneurs watching the show, Zach, and, you know, maybe they're hitting a tough time in their business. Maybe they're hitting a tough time in their career path as an entrepreneur. So I'm hoping, Zach, based on your experience, and it's an immense experience of building businesses, what you can share with the younger entrepreneurs watching the show about how to get through a tough time, how to get through a roadblock, how to get through that brick wall and come out the other side as an entrepreneur. Because as entrepreneurs, we all have tough times. I'm hoping, Zach, you can give some motivation or some sound advice to the younger guys and gals watching the show about how to get through those tough times. You know, there's, there's two types of people in the world, in my opinion. There are, there are wolves and milking cows. There are those that that uh, they're like, hey, I just want to go every day and I'll do, I'll eat my grass and I'll provide milk for you, you know. And then there are those, the other type of person that's like a wolf. They're like, like I don't, don't tell me what to do. I'll go out and hunt my own. But, but sometimes you 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 starve, and uh, but then when you do catch something big, you, you eat for a while, right? I mean, that's kind of the that's kind of like a oversimplified kind of look at it. And so if you if you know you're one of those people where you're willing to sometimes starve because you want to go for something bigger and not necessarily, you know, uh, and again, there's nothing wrong with either one. It's just like, that's how you kind of know if you're an entrepreneur or not, because you, it, you will inevitably come across obstacles. And if you're hungry enough to achieve and to accomplish, and, and, and you love that satisfaction of actually building something with your own hands and with a team where you, um, there's very few things that are satisfying. And so if you're assuming that those are the people that are like on that path, you will inevitably come across problems. 
I mean, there are different types of things. There's like cutting edge and bleeding edge. Sometimes you might think, well, wait a minute, is this a business that other people are doing or is anybody doing it good enough? Could I do a better job at it? Am I providing a new service or a new product? And so assuming that people have kind of vetted out those things and you're just kind of on that path, just know that all entrepreneurs go through struggles. And in fact, there have been plenty of times when I've second guessed guessed myself. In fact, I've wasted hours and hours and hours second guessing myself in the early years of my entrepreneurial journey. And I realized that it's a waste of energy. And so if you can just stop wasting that energy on second guessing yourself, but actually thinking, okay, what can I do? Like, what do I need to look at? How do I need to fix this right now? And I know this is kind of like nebulous, but I just realized that it's one of the things that applies, I think, to all entrepreneurs is that if you aren't wasting your time regretting or second guessing, because again, nobody sets off on a business uh, you know, plan and expects to fail. And yet I failed a bunch of different times in the past. And ironically, I've learned more from those failures than I have from my, my successes. But because of that, um, and, and realizing that that some of the advantages or some of the, the things that I recommend people do is partner with the right people because like you, when you can complement, like for example, with Steve, Rhett and Michael, it's such an incredible team. They're, they're such a great team to be able to have on board. Um, and somebody uh, successful, I heard say, when you find the right team, you take them all the way. And, and there's, there's, you know, Anyway, I, I could go on and on. I'm actually kind of writing a book on, on uh, in fact, when I moved to Hawaii, it was, it's called uh, Quit Your Job and Move to Hawaii. And I'll, I'll share that with you guys later. But it's a whole, my whole journey of failures and successes and what I've personally learned. And I love looking at entrepreneurs and modeling different examples of what, what works for them and what, and then try to what, think about what that could, how that could apply to me. And one thing I've also found is that not everything applies to everyone. And so I call it the mentor dilemma. Sometimes you'll have one person that was successful in one aspect and they became, uh, you know, they became sex- successful doing it one way. And then another uh, successful businessman did a completely different way and became successful. And so the, the question isn't, uh, is one better than another? It's a pl- learn and learn and constantly consume and invest in yourself. I, I, I register like I have uh, like master classes and I and an audible like and I'm I'm going through just books multiple books every month um, because it's it's you're worth it like you sh- everyone every entrepreneur should should invest continually invest in themselves in knowledge and excitement and and pull from the greats and continue to study because it also helps inspire. Wow. I love it. I mean, for entrepreneurs watching the show, rewind what Zach just said. I mean, that's remarkable. We're going to watch for the book coming out. I love it so much. There's so much to unpack with both you and your brother, of course, what you and Red are doing and Michael and Steve and the entire team at Physio is remarkable. I know that uh, Dr. Red had to, had to, you know, had to channel off the uh, interview right now. He had some things to attend to. He's a, he's a practicing physician, of course. But I wanted to thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been absolutely remarkable, Zach. Congratulations on really training and retraining and getting our future physicians ready for the stage one and two tests with what you're doing at Physio. I know there's a lot more video content coming out. It's a robust system and a robust uh, platform that you've built. We're going to watch for big things. I'm sure you've got a lot of things on tap in the future, and we're going to bring you back on the show. Especially, we want to talk a little bit more with you about entrepreneurship. Maybe we devote a whole show to it because it's just remarkable. Zach, thanks so much for coming on the Dot Com Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series today. This has been awesome. Well, it has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for having us. Yes. 